Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. And in today's video, I want to once again turn my attention back to weapons. Weapons in Destiny 2 are going to be undergoing some pretty significant changes. While the way they feel and handle in-game is familiar, the underlying systems will of course alter how we use them. I've already spoken in great detail about the new power weapon slot that now houses a grand total of 6 weapon archetypes. Snipers, shotguns, fusion rifles, rocket launchers, new grenade launchers and swords. And I've also spoken in depth about the differences between the other two slots, Kinetic and Energy, which now house auto rifles, scout rifles, pulse rifles, hand cannons, sidearms, and the new weapon type SMG. Of course, if you missed any of those videos, then you can find them linked down below. There's a lot more to it than just the surface level details, so they are well worth watching in the event you aren't up to date. However, there are a few more things that I have yet to touch on, and that is what we'll be talking about in this video today. Namely, weapon mods, they're now a thing the new Vice Weapon Foundry, the possibility of weapon skins, and also the way Power Ammo now works in The Crucible. So, if you do enjoy this video, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions, and also don't forget that we are now exactly a week away from the E3 conferences kicking off. So in a little over seven days, we should have some new Destiny 2 information, perhaps a new trailer from PlayStation's press conference on the Monday, and of course, I'll also have some brand new PC gameplay to share with you guys at the event as well. But anyway, that's next week. Let's focus on the here and the now, First up, what's all this talk of weapon mods? Well, in the gameplay reveal livestream, during the trailer and the vidoc, we got a very quick glimpse of a Guardian's inventory screen. And on hovering over a weapon, you can indeed see that right at the bottom is a slot. With the accompanying text, no weapon mod is applied. Now to be clear, when I was at the hands-on event a few weeks back, our ability to inspect weapons and gear beyond the surface level was disabled. In other words, you couldn't hit Y or Triangle to go deeper, check out the perks, and in this case, any new slots. In fact, in the build we played, weapon mod slots simply were not a thing. So, there was no way to get an exact idea as to what they are at this stage. However, looking at the way that Destiny weapons have worked in the past, the fact that they typically have nodes that you choose from when picking how we want the weapon to handle or perform, then it could indeed be a possibility that these slots are perhaps designated for more general perks or additions that can be slotted in. Imagine, if you will for a second, that you have your base set of perks, something to help with stability or something to help manage your recoil, but then you were able to collect, say, magazine extensions or alternate scopes. I mean, one of the determining factors in Destiny 1 for picking a gun for PvP was often the scope, snipers especially. What if we were able to swap scopes between guns? That could be pretty sweet. If we look at The Division for a moment, another game I cover pretty extensively on this channel, in The Division you have the base weapon that has a set of three talents, and you are then able to mod the weapon with a range of sights, grips, muzzle attachments, etc. And while I don't think Destiny 2 would go that granular, because let's be honest, inventory management would become a nightmare, I do think that a more simplified option could be something we could see, because you could then take, say, your favourite scope or your favourite sight, and move that from one gun to another, provided of course it supports it. It is however worth mentioning that I don't think this slot is for weapon skins. I will speak in a moment about the possibility of weapon skins, but I feel if it was a skin slot, it wouldn't really be referred to as a quote-unquote mod slot. But either way, that is just something to think about. Admittedly, right now we don't know for sure, so my above thoughts are just speculation, but what we do know for sure is that weapons will be getting mod slots. So hopefully we'll get some more info on that very soon, maybe E3. So let's move on from there to speak very quickly about weapon skins. This is something we have wanted for a pretty long time in Destiny, and while we sort of have these in the form of ornaments for exotic weapons, which are really cool, and I do like these, I would also like it if there were a way to extend these beyond the exotic category. Even something a little bit more bog standard, just a simple recolor or a camo paint job, the sort of thing you'd find in Call of Duty, Battlefield, Titanfall, that sort of thing. Heck, even if it was something like our shaders now applied to both our character and our weapons, or there was an option to enable or disable it, that would be sweet. However, wishlist aside, there is one scene that could perhaps hint at this being a possibility. In this scene, when the hunter is running alongside the tank, you can see he is wielding a hacker sniper rifle from the New Monarchy faction. We know it's a New Monarchy weapon because of the emblem up here at the top. But to any of you guys that have played Destiny 1, you'll of course know that New Monarchy is synonymous with the colour red, red and white being their colour scheme, just like black and white is Dead Orbit and every colour of the rainbow is FWC. So why, in this situation, is a New Monarchy weapon sporting a green or a kind of turquoise paint job? Now yes, it is entirely possible that New Monarchy have broadened their palette and perhaps offer guns in different colours. I mean, perhaps off the back of the tower being destroyed, maybe they don't have all their resources available. I mean, painting a gun red and white versus, say, saving humanity from the impending doom brought about by the Cabal Red Legion 
you could argue that colour matching isn't really a priority here, but again, it's just something to think about. However, while we are on the topic of cool colours, that is also a nice segue for me to talk about the new Weapon Foundry Vice. Mark Noseworthy came on stage during the gameplay reveal wearing this pretty cool shirt, which at the time had people asking questions, but shortly after, those questions were answered. Joining the existing roster of Suros, Omelon and Hacker, as well as a few others too, Vice is the new kid on the block. Green is their colour, and that's not just in their logo, that also carries into their weapons. It is very easy to spot a Vice weapon given the light and dark green paint jobs they have, and during my time going hands-on I got a chance to test out three weapons from this foundry, but we've actually seen a total of four. Starting off with my own gameplay, we have the Red Mamba 3MG, the SMG from this foundry, and probably my favourite weapon I used at the entire event. This one in particular deals arc damage, can fire 900 rounds per minute and has a magazine size of 37. A common theme between SMGs is that they all, at least from what we've seen so far, appear to have the lightweight perk so you move faster whilst holding it, likely as a means to allow you to close the gap on your enemy and use the weapon at its intended range. But this also has a perk that grants you a short period of increased stability and accuracy on the initial trigger ball. So for this particular SMG, compared to say the Omelon one that I had a chance to try, the Red Mamba has a slightly longer effective range thanks to the initial burst perk. The interesting thing about the Vice weapons however, especially evident with this SMG and the Auto Rifle that I'll speak about shortly, is that they all seem to have an additional green particle effect when shooting. It's obviously just for show, since we know the weapon deals arc damage in this case, but it is still a cool touch nonetheless. Your second weapon, again in the kinetic slot, is the Urchin 3SI. This is a sidearm that deals solar damage, has a magazine size of 50 and can fire 60 rounds a minute. It also shares the same lightweight perk on the SMGs, likely for a similar reason, although do bear in mind the perks that we saw at the event might not be final, so this could all change come September. However, it also has a precision kill perk, which greatly decreases the reload time. The design of this one is actually pretty cool. It's got a sort of fin looking thing under the barrel, sort of like an Aquaman gun, if Aquaman used guns. Moving on from there, I want to speak about one more primary slash kinetic weapon, and this one was actually shown during the first mission gameplay. We don't get to see this one in the inspection screen, so very little is actually known about it, but it is quite clearly a viced weapon. The logo is the first giveaway, but if that wasn't already enough, then the characteristic lime and dark green is also ever present. This one, probably more so than the SMG in fact, really shows off this green mist or particle effect present when firing the weapon. If it wasn't for the fact that we knew the pre-existing elements, you'd be forgiven for thinking this could perhaps have been... A new element. Alas, it's not, it is just a vice characteristic. I also do really hope that there is a vice shader in game. I mean, like that alongside the weapons. Please, please, Bungie, just let me be a Green Ranger hunter, a roll around in vice green. That would be incredible. But anyway, I digress. Finally, the sniper we had a chance to play with also belonged to the Vice Foundry, the Nadal D. This one also deals solar damage, but as with Destiny 1 right now, I imagine these drop in varying configurations. It also has a 7 round magazine, can fire 134 rounds a minute, and comes with the aggressive perks so you get high damage at the cost of high recoil. Plus, it automatically reloads a portion of your magazine when you are critically wounded, which could make it great for boss encounters if you take a hefty amount of damage, but it results in a kind of cheeky reload, then you could probably trade the damage for some more DPS. Now finally, the last thing I want to touch on, and again, this will be brief, but that is power ammo. I've spoken about it in passing, but since I'm making all these videos to try and go over everything we know right now in as much detail as possible, then I just want to call this out in a video. This is specifically a PvP change, but in the Crucible, gone are the days of everyone grouping up around a heavy ammo chest, one person opening it up, and everyone nearby getting it, in turn resulting in your entire team roaming the map with rockets, LMGs, or swords. In Destiny 2, in a very Halo-like fashion, the person that picks it up first is the person that gets it. In the countdown game type we played, the power ammo timer kicks in about 15 20 seconds into the match, and it's then a further 25 to 30 seconds before it spawns. There are two boxes on the map, one per team or per side of the map as expected, and again, once they drop in, the person that picks it up is the one that gets it. So if you're playing in the Crucible as a team, this will likely be where you let your sniper grab the ammo, or your Rambo guy with the rocket launcher. There will of course be no point everyone grouping up on it. It'll likely result in you all getting killed, or you strategically split the map and then try and grab both, but either way, one person per spawn. Also worth mentioning, when Bungie spoke in an interview about how they plan to balance the power weapons, I mean, why would you choose a fusion rifle over a grenade launcher, for example, the answer to that comes down to ammo. Essentially, if you grab the power ammo and you have a sniper, a shotgun, or a fusion rifle, then you will get more ammo than if you pick it up with a rocket launcher or a grenade launcher. That way, the weapons typically associated with the words quote-unquote power will be much more in line with your super, one or two shots, so make it count. Meanwhile, the new kids on the power block, you will likely get a little bit more mileage out of them. But that, my friends, is pretty much it. That is everything else you need to know about weapons based on the information we currently have. This video, combined with my other two, should cover absolutely everything, 
and hopefully with E3 around the corner, I'll be able to dig a little bit deeper and answer some of those questions. For the time being though, if you enjoyed the video, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below if you have any questions, and also let me know if you guys have any ideas on what you think those weapon mods may be. Thank you very much for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.